So I had to learn how to really simplify everything and take a step back, especially when I was communicating with other people. Yeah. You know, to go, how can I, how can I make this very duplicatable so I can get as many people as possible doing this same simple thing, pass the same message, highlight other people having the success from what I'm saying. And the power was if I teach you something great, you're like, Oh, dope, that worked, whatever. But if I can get you to talk about the simple way to do something Mm. and you know, someone on your team, chase figures it out and go, Hey man, I copied what Cody said and it worked for me too. Mm -hmm. There was power in that. So I had, I had to make things really simple so you could articulate it to other people as well. You know, there was more power in getting you to say the things I was saying than there was in me saying them all the time, you know, and if it worked for you, great. If it works for me, some people believe it. Most don't. It works for you. A few more people believe it. When it works for the new guy that you brought in and it works for him too, just a wrap. Yeah. You know, and so I, I tried my best to kind of play that game. Hey, what is up? Welcome back to the CA Power Player Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Askins, and today we have a special guest, man. He's been on the channel numerous times before i call him the hundred million dollar man <laughs> and i love hanging with him all the way from technically like kennesaw something like that but atlanta georgia area please welcome john wedmore what's up buddy? my man always good brother appreciate you having me absolutely man appreciate i love having you on me. the channel um <laughs> you, you always do a phenomenal dro- job i think one of the things i like about you the most is um you've are very humble for the amount of success you've had number one which says a ton about you and your character but number two, also outside of that, your practical like appointment setting and phone call and like techniques that you teach are very, very replicatable and duplicatable. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I appreciate it, dude, first of all. And uh, trying to not forget, you know, like, yeah, we've had success, but I've had a lot of damn help, thankfully, because without all the help, I'd still be like, I don't know, an accountant somewhere or working in a warehouse. Who knows what I'd be doing yeah. for right now? Because I was tired of the accounting thing, too. Um, so I have no clue what I'd be doing if, if I didn't get all the help and feedback I got along the way and totally figure, uh, you know, it was kind of neat getting to watch people that helped the, 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 the enjoyment they got out of the results from it. You know what I mean? Like their piece yeah. of the journey. And there was a lot of people that I, that I got help from and sought out mentorship from. I was like, dang, they're like happier than I am. You know what I mean? It was like wild to see like when something would be a new milestone or, you know, so maybe you get to a point where you can buy a nice house or whatever, put the kids in school. You know what I mean? Like just stuff, you know, yeah. and new accomplishments and awards and stuff like that. It was like always cool to see, you know, like Steph was always so proud because all the sacrifice she did at home and the people here, all this, all the things. And me, I was a pain in the butt, dude. I asked a lot of questions, but I, 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 I did the stuff. Yeah. But I was a lot, you know, I was, I'm a lot. I'm a lot to deal with. And, uh, you know, so I think people, um, I appreciated it all along the way. And I think uh, getting to see the joy out of it, man, I, I'm like, I want that. I want that role. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's cool selling, whatever. I didn't, I'll be honest, it wasn't my favorite thing on earth. But the role of taking someone that is willing to put in the work and, and guiding them towards kind of quicker success than they could have on their own, just because I can tell them all the stuff I messed up. Yeah. Like, that sounded, that sounded, more intriguing to me and, and, and being able to provide that same thing. So I, I, I don't forget that dude. And totally, you know, I had to learn how to simplify things because once I figured it out, like I can, I'm actually like a very analytical person mm-hmm. and I can overcomplicate something in a second. You know, if I'm trying to put together something at the house, a, a dang kid's crib, a toy or whatever, I'll overcomplicate it, dude. I'll screw in pieces backwards. I'll get frustrated and stuff will come over and be like, bro, this screw goes there and the whole thing goes together. And I'm like, I've been banging my head against the wall for four and a half hours trying to figure it out, (laughs) you know? So I had to learn how to really simplify everything and take a step back, especially when I was communicating with other people, Yeah, you know, to go, how can I, how can I make this very duplicatable so I can get as many people as possible doing this same simple thing, pass the same message, highlight other people having the success from what I'm saying. And the power was, if I teach you something great, you're like, Oh, dope. That worked, whatever. But if I can get you to talk about the simple way to do something Mm -hmm. and, you know, someone on your team, Chase figures it out and go, Hey man, I 
copied what Cody said and it worked for me too. Mm-hmm. There was power in that. So I, ha- I had yeah. to make things really simple so you could articulate it to other people as well. You know, there was more power in getting you to say the things I was saying than there was in me saying them all the time. Yeah. You know, and if it worked for you, great. If it works for me, some people believe it, most don't. It works for you, a few more people believe it. When it works for the new guy that you brought in and it works for him too, just a wrap. Yeah. You know, and so I, I tried my best to kind of play that game, um, you know, along the way. So that's a good point, man. And I think a lot of people try to um, complicate this. You know, they want to like reinvent the will and do things their own yeah. way. Um, what advice would you give to somebody that's like trying to always find a new way to succeed at selling insurance? Yeah, man. I, um, it's a fine balance, dude, because this industry evolves. You know, if, if people don't go out of their way and try to learn how to do telesales in today's world, we aren't where we are. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, right. but I think there's so few people who are going to be like industry leaders and ahead of, ahead of the curve that for most of us, yeah. someone's probably already on their way to figure out like whatever's coming next, someone's already working on. Yeah. So I'm, my personal style is like, you know, let me just copy and paste what someone else is really good at and just do figure out how to do more of it and be more efficient with it. You know, I, I don't like every time I teach, man, I, I get good feedback. Right. Yeah. But my point is like, dude, I didn't create anything new. I didn't mm. create sales. I didn't create insurance. I didn't create how to sell an insurance. Like I didn't do any of that. I yeah. learned it and I'm just teaching you what I've learned maybe from my perspective. You know, so I, I think the overwhelming 99 plus percent can literally just take what others are doing and having success and literally copy and paste, you know, maybe uh, apply things to their own personality, tweak it. So it's them and not trying to be John or Cody, but yeah. taking the concepts and, and, and making it their own, um, you know, and if you're one of those natural, like, yo, I invent stuff, I make new things, you know who you are. You know what I'm saying? Correct. Like, Correct. Dude, Sean Mike's done crazy things with it. There's like, there's one Sean Mike, dude. You know what I'm saying? Elon, there's one of them. There's one Brian Adams with integrity. Dude, yep. let him do him. You know what I'm Correct. saying? Correct. And that's worked really well for me. I don't, I don't try to reinvent anything, dude. I try, I try to take things and apply them to who I am and my personality. Yeah. Um, and, and I think far too many people, instead of just copying what works, they try to do it on their own. And you know what I see as one of the biggest struggles, man, is the people struggling try to dictate what they need to know next. You know what I'm saying? They're yeah, like, I need good. help with X. I need help with in-home. Dude, remember, you're the one that sucks still. Like, why are you trying to dictate what you need help with? Why don't you yeah. ask someone who's ahead of you and go, I think I need help here. Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah, you, you're, you're like, dude, you have three appointments. What are you talking about you need help with in-home? <laughs> correct. You need correct. You need help with lead strategy. You need help with schedule. You need help with discipline. You know what I'm saying? It's like there's a there's a root problem and there's like a it's like it's like the thing when you're when you have a headache and you take an aspirin, but you get a headache because you drink too much. <laughs> and I'm like, the problem's not you have a headache, the problem is you drink too much. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's the same concept here. And I had to I had to I had to learn that, man, that it's like trying to scale this thing was tough. Because the the agent who's struggling, the new agent, they believe they know what they need help with. Mm. And I'm like, ah, it doesn't make any sense. You know what I'm saying? It's like, again, it's Maddox is almost 12. It'll be 12 next week. And That's I don't know awesome. when this airs, so it might be 12 when it airs. Who knows? 28th of October. And uh, he's in baseball, football, golf. He's doing a little bit of everything. You know, Maddox, when he goes to the coach and he's like, I need to learn to throw a curveball. He's like, slow down, Tiger. You ain't ready for a curveball yet, dude. You need to learn how to throw a fastball the right way still. Yeah. You know what I mean? You need yeah. to learn how to have balance and push off your back leg. You need to learn how to follow mm. through the right way. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and that's yep. what the coaches are there for. And now he tries to, he thinks he knows where he needs help. But again, he's still relative to, you know, elite players. He's still in the learning phase. He's not really that, for his age, he's really good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But relative to what his knowledge level will be one day when he keeps putting in the work, he's still, he's got a long way to go. Yeah. So I'm like, settle down, dude. Let the coach dictate what you need to learn. And I'm not the guy either. I don't try to teach Maddox baseball skills. That's, that's not where I, I don't know anything about fundamentals. So I try to teach him that it's okay making mistakes. You know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? Like, I'm happy you're mad. You didn't perform the way you wanted to, 
but I dislike that you hang on to it for three innings. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yes, because I, I don't like the kids that aren't mad either. Like you drop the ball and you're not mad. Like that's weird. Yeah. But I don't want Maddox to be mad for the next two days. You know what I'm saying? So I try to teach him that stuff, but I let the coach teach fundamental. And I, again, I think a lot of people in, in this industry and probably it's human nature. So it's, I'm sure it's all industries. Yeah. They try to dictate their own level of needs, which I definitely was like, you know, just tell me what I got to do. And when I'm really bad at something, please tell me because I'm oblivious. Right. If you try to give me hints, I'll miss them. So just give it to me. And thankfully, I had people around me that were willing to tell me the truth. And when I was really bad at stuff, they'd be yep. like, yo, you're really bad here. I'm like, okay. And, you know, and I, I, I try to find my fault in every situation, even if I can find a way to blame someone else. And maybe logically, it's someone else's fault in some way. I'm like, how did we get here, though? Like, what did I do? I could have prevented this somehow. You know, and that's, that's been really helpful for me, dude. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I love that you talk about copy what works. That's, I think that's one of the fastest way to hack success yeah. is literally just copy okay. what works. Um, one of the things I was thinking about, too, when you were talking that I remember when I hear people tell stories about John Wetmore, the yeah. word that comes to mind is inquisitive. Like, no, you told me how you would, like, go fly to these – FFL training events and you'd have like this row of all of, of guys that were like sitting by each other and there was a seat between them and a bunch of mm -hmm. empty seats on the plane. You just, you like bought the ticket or just went and sat between them, you know, like mm -hmm. you were there yeah. and you were yeah. inquisitive. You want to be around it. You ask questions. Yeah. How important is that? That's been everything for me. You know, um, it's funny. Depends what setting you see me in. If you see me in a certain setting, I don't say about three words, you know, and then in some word, some cases I don't shut up. Hmm. Um, but I've always been a, a, a bit of a talker and I'm, I, I'm, I am, I'm curious about, I'm a super curious person. I want to understand things. I like to understand how things work. I like to know the yeah. why behind things, um, which I found dude, that annoys some people, mm -hmm. you know, when I was learning on any job, they're like, all right, you do, you take these boxes and you put them in this spot to go on the truck. And I'm like, but why do we put them there? <laughs> And people are like, dude, because I told you to. I'm like, no, but I want to understand it. It's like, oh, well, I put them here because they go on the truck last. The first stop actually goes on the truck last because we don't want them picking through all the all the all the pallets out of order. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, so a driver, if he's out in the field at an Applebee's delivering, you know, whatever ground beef, and I mess up and I put it on the bottom, but it's his first stop. He then has to take apart the whole pallet to get the piece on the bottom that I messed up. It ruins his whole day. That's I'm like, got it. That makes sense. You know what I mean? And it, mm -hmm. and so when I, I teach even here with staff or whatever, sometimes I'll, I teach that way. I'm like, here's why we do this. And I try to, I try to explain like how it all kind of comes together. Um, and that's my mind works that way, dude. So I, I do, I ask a lot of questions cause I want to know how things connect and why we do certain things. Not because like in a negative way, I'm not like questioning, like, are you telling me the truth? Or are you giving me the right advice? If I go to the right person, I know I'm probably getting good advice. Yeah. But I want to understand the logic behind the reason, you know, and it, it makes me absorb it differently. It helps me teach it. It helps me connect the dots a little bit. Um, so I've, I've, I've been that way my whole life, dude. It's just a, like, I'm curious as I'll get out and I'm not afraid to ask. Yeah. I think a lot of people are afraid to ask questions because they feel like they're going to look dumb. And I just don't care. I'm like, I'll pre, pre, preface it. I'll be like, you know, maybe I'm a dummy. I don't know, but I really don't care. Hey, I have a question about this. You know, um, yes. you see me, you see me speak enough or if I'm in a Q and a setting, I mean, you've seen me in different settings like that. I, I love those settings. Yeah. You're Dude, really sometimes good. Sometimes people, too. I appreciate it. Sometimes people use like these big old words and I don't pretend like I know what it means. I just ask them. I'm like, yeah, I don't know what that word means. I'm going to have to Google it in a little while. Can you just tell me what that word is? Yeah. You know, I just, yeah. I, so I'm not afraid to like look stupid or uneducated. I just, I think it's a, I think it's a, an advantage that I have, mm -hmm. you know? So I've, I've, um, if you talk to Mike Kilomet, who was like my closest mentor over the years, love Mike and be like, yo, how many questions did Wetmore ask? <laughs> He'd give you some obscene number. It was, it was a lot, you know, I'm gonna ask and I wish more people did that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know. for sure. Um, you also said something a few minutes ago that I, made me think um, about another phrase I had, I had heard of. Um, you talked about how you're just direct with people, you know, and 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 just honest. And I heard a guy one time that does like nine figures, and he was like, he's like, everybody thinks I'm a jerk. 
-hmm. He said, but I just care enough to be direct. And I'm like, yeah, oh, dude, I like that. I feel like I'm lying. Yeah. If I'm not. You know what I mean? And again, I think that's I one need... of the biggest things I learned from you, by the way. Personally, that was yeah. one of the biggest things. Yeah. Um, I need direct for me. Like, I can remember the first time I was um I was the first like girlfriend I had, like like real girl in high school. I was a sophomore. And I don't remember the situation, what we're saying, but I went to her house and her mom and they were like making fun of me somehow. They were like poking at me and it went right over my head. I like had no idea what they were talking about. And they saw it on my face mm -hmm. and she goes to her daughter. She's like, Dude, he's really oblivious, huh? And I was like, what's oblivious mean? Like, I didn't even know what it meant. And so they explain like the concept of it. Right. And I, I, I had to learn like, dude, I am oblivious to a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, if, if Steph like, and which she doesn't do because she knows me really well, if she needs me to do something and she starts to hint at it, I'm probably going to miss it. You know what I mean? I just, I don't yeah. pick up on it, dude. I, and I've been that way for, I'm like, I am just oblivious sometimes to obvious signs. I'm like, why are we playing this game? Can't you just tell me, please? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, save us both the headache. Just yes. tell me. And so I feel like I have to speak that way because I don't want other people to feel that way when I'm, ta I'm talking. If I got a sugar it, I'm like, they're not going to understand. Maybe, yeah. and maybe they do. I don't know. But I also don't know how to do it the right way. You know, and I feel bad, man. I'm like, the example I always give is like, if, if somebody's not working enough to have real results, right? right? And I can understand their logic when they go, I want to get better at whatever, phones presentation, sales skills. Like I get, I get, I get it. And I'm not yeah. saying you shouldn't want that. But if I spend too much time on the sales skill set part, which I believe is the easiest piece. Yeah. Especially when you do a lot of activity in anything. For Again, sure. you want to learn how to bowl better. I bet if you bowl seven days a week, you'll be better than if you bowl once a month. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not too complicated. And I really don't know how, have to know how much like, oil needs to go on the bowling alley lane and how tight I have to grip the ball if I bowl once a month. Cause it's irrelevant. You're going to yeah. suck. But if I'm bowling every day, dude, and I'm on different lanes and I feel there and you start getting a feel for things, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's some technique, mm -hmm. you know? And so for me, I feel like if, if, if somebody wants some skill set thing and their activity is so low and I spend 45 minutes with them teaching them in home, I feel like I'm telling them my in-home is so good. You can be amazing if you just say the words I'm going to tell you and mm -hmm. you'll have success. And I don't want to mislead people, dude. When I, when I know, I, dude, even if you like close all of them this week and you run three appointments, five appointments, you know what I mean? Like you have limited activity. I just know you're going to, you're going to be in the same situation really soon again. You know what I mean? You're going to be frustrated and you're going to say, John stuff doesn't work. Completely. You know what I mean? Completely. And I just, dude, I hate that for people. So I'm like, can I just be real? Yeah. Like no matter how good I, and maybe I am good at it. Maybe I can tell you all the stuff to say. Maybe that's true. But I'm a hundred percent sure if someone's relatively new and inexperienced, I can tell you exactly how to close every situation I've been in that I'm good at. There's zero chance you're going to go and say it in the same order with the same tonality, with the same timing, with the same intentionality. Even if I do teach you, whereas if you do a lot of reps, I can be like, Hey, you know how, when you like transition from showing people pricing to taking an application, you know, that awkward little pause that you get, cause you don't know how to make that transition really smoothly. Here's how you handle that. Mm. But if you're only running a few appointments a week, you don't know, you don't, you don't feel that enough to know it's a thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it, it's really, it's, I don't know how to teach when someone doesn't have, it's, it's harder. You know, and yeah. so I just, I figure like, why not just tell them where they really need help? Again, it's the whole thing I said earlier, not letting them dictate what training they need. You know, so I've, I've, I've just learned like, I don't know, I feel really bad because so many people did go like, oh, that's great. I love that close. And then then their next appointment isn't for four days and they forget. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I just, I've learned and I've learned it's not really effective. It's terrible for my business. If I look at it from a selfish standpoint, from my company, my agency, it's really bad business. You know, 
So I'm like, yep. all right. So for me, it's like, if you're not going to work a lot, I, I'm not mad. I used to get mad. I used to be really mad when people didn't work a lot. Now I don't care. But what I, what I do is I preface it and say, it's going to be really inconsistent for the rest of time. Hmm. So your, your choice to not work hard and sacrifice a lot, unless you're the unicorn, which there's some, you know, you've met some, you know what I mean? They come in, yep. they sling it and they don't have to run a lot of appointments and they do great. Correct. So I'm like, amen, dude, high five. But I can't train on that. I can't scale that. I can't build a business on that. You know, I give that guy a high five and I stay out of his way. You know, so I, I've just yeah. like, what works the most? Where are the odds? How do you know what I mean? And yes, yes. So. Here's one, um, one more question. Um, what was a, what was the biggest, when you look back, like, was there one big aha moment where you're like, it finally clicked and, or, or you had a big revelation where you're like, dang, that was the answer the whole time. You know, is there anything? That's the activity standard? piece, honestly. Yeah. I mean, that was for me, dude, it like one day. So I'll tell you how it evolved and like the whole do more thing Yes. for me, that, that is how I changed my life. You know, so and I'm, again, I'm I'm like I know that's not necessarily the only way. I'm not that ignorant, sure. but it's a really good way, and it works a lot, and for a lot of people. You know what I mean? Yes. And does. I'm not saying it's forever. Like you got to do a bunch more till you get really good, and then you can scale back as needed. Right. You know. But I I was I was I was almost five years licensed. Mm. Obviously, didn't do anything for the first two years because I quit like within twenty minutes. And then, uh, so I got licensed 2010. I quit, I dialed once and quit for two years. I got started again in 2012. Um, and so it took me two years to sell my first policy. Technically, I just didn't work basically for two years. Yeah. And, uh, I started selling on a regular basis in like August or so of, uh, 2012. And I didn't get, I didn't get any kind of like elite sales awards in any manner whatsoever till 2015 so it's wow. two and a half years and uh, i was tired of being mediocre again i was doing okay relative to the average agent i was i was okay i was issuing you know 12 grand a month on average maybe 15 to be a great month you know i mean i made a I made a buck yeah. 30 gross net maybe 100 high 90 100 whatever I, it was okay what well, life wasn't bad but it wasn't yeah. life-changing you know and um i go through some financial stuff and I get really mad. I got really frustrated over like some finance finances and things. And I remember I was mad over like a thousand bucks one day for a, m a monthly bill and uh kill him at her. I'm losing my mind over it. Cause it's a new thousand bucks. I'm I literally lose my mind. And uh, he comes in and he goes, dude, are you really like over here kicking and screaming like a five-year-old over one application a month? Mm. And I was like, yeah, actually I am. <laughs> so then I kind of got mad at myself for it, you know? And I, at kind of at the same time, I was really starting to, I had a good history of numbers that I kept track of, basic yeah. stuff, nothing crazy. How many phone calls, how many leads I bought, how many appointments I've run, how many I closed and my, my issue paid. I mean, like basic stuff. Yep. And I'm, I'm, I'm analyzing it one day, man. And I'm frustrated out of my mind because I can't, I can't figure out how to get to that 20K a month level at that time. And to mm -hmm. be clear, at that time in this space, that was a big number. Now yeah. fools are doing that every week. It's it's insane. True. So um, I'm, I'm frustrated because I can't figure out how to get from 12 to 15 to 20. Like I'm literally overcomplicating it. What new yeah. lead type? What area do I run? What do I say on the phone to get more premium out of Bob? And I'm way overanalyzing this thing. So one day I'm looking at my numbers on the spreadsheet. And I still have the spreadsheet. I literally go look at it for fun some days. And uh, I start looking at it. And it's it, the math, the number said I was running on average, like it was like 43 appointments a month or something. This is in time where it was all in home. There was no telesales. There was nothing remote. So I was going to people's houses like 40 something a month. And I looked at my, my deposits, right. And the average came out. I was, I was making like 300 and something bucks every time I booked an appointment. So if I just did appointment booked and deposits and just divided one by the other, then the answer was 300 bucks. So I'm like, every time I was mad over a cancellation, a no-show, a chargeback, all the stuff in the middle, I was like, well, that factored in. And I never yeah. really knew every time I booked one, I was making 300 bucks regardless of the outcome. Does that make sense? And then I looked at my dials per deposits 
And that was like 17 bucks. Every time I made a phone call, it didn't matter if they picked up, didn't pick up, told me to F off, booked an appointment, didn't book an appointment, didn't matter. It was 17 bucks. Wow. And at this time, dude, like that number I analyzed was for my first year part-time. And my comp, that was before FFL. And uh, my, my, my comp at that time was like a 55, dude. It was trash. Like I was making Milma, you know what I mean? And it was still 17 bucks. Every time I call, if I called Cody once, 17 bucks, called Cody twice, 34 bucks. Four, you know what I mean? It didn't matter if you answered. And I remember looking at it and I started kind of doing math on like how long I'm in an appointment, how long a phone call was. And I just start looking at it and I was like, dude, if I did the math, it's not many hours that I'm doing those particular things. Yeah. You know, and I never realized I'm like, you know, 300 bucks every time I book one and I'm frustrated. And I'm like, I make me 300 bucks. I don't care if, if Cody paid me 300 bucks every time I booked an appointment, I don't care if no one was there ever. I yeah. would just drive around the globe. You know what I mean? Running appointments. Totally. If it were, if it were a salad, I wouldn't care. So I was like, why do I care now? And to be honest, I wouldn't try to get better if I could make 300 bucks every time I booked one. It, I wouldn't try to get better at sales. Who cares? I booked the appointment. I make 300 bucks. Who gives a crap? Yeah. I would just get really good at booking appointments. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm like, yo, what if I stop trying to get better at everything and I just do a bunch more? Like just what if? So let's, pre let's pre play pretend. I said, if I'm running 43 a month, which is, again, 11 a week, whatever the number is. Yeah. I'm like, what if I did 30 a week? Because that's how many of the elite producers are running. They're running 20. Most were running like 20 at the time in home. And I'm like, a couple weirdos were running 30. I'm like, yo, what if I do 30? And mm -hmm. I did the math. And I went 30 appointments times 300 something bucks, whatever it was, 342 bucks a month, whatever the number was. 30 appointments times 300 something bucks. I'm like, yo, I can be the same exact person and make like nine, 10 grand a week. I was like, F it. That's my strategy this year. I'm going to try it different this year. Awesome. And I just, dude, I started going at it. And I'm like, yo, 30 appointments a week is 120 a month. It was 1500 for the year. I got no showed a bunch. I got canceled a bunch. I got a bunch of chargeback. But dude, I made like 450 grand. And I'm like, all right, that worked. <laughs> From now on, do more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And yeah. then what's nuts, bro, is which makes sense when you say it out loud. After running that many appointments in a year, I ran more appointments in 12 months than I ran in the previous three years combined. Dude, I got really good. Yeah. So then the following year, I was able to dial less, buy less leads, run less appointments, and make the same money. That's awesome. You mean the, the second year of that strategy? Yep. So it was like, do more now, get better later. But later when I'm better, I can do less and make the same. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we never think about and, that. That's a good point. Yeah, so it was like... Dude, I, I go up to Steph and I'm like, yeah, Yo, you ain't gonna believe what I just figured out. I'm making 300 something bucks an appointment. Yo, I'm game time. And I just ran like crazy for the next two years. You know, I got to run a little bit less the second year. And that was 15, 16 by 2017, literally by March of 2017, which is two years after that kind of light bulb. Yeah, I started training on this concept. I started showing people their averages per dial, their averages per appointment. And that makes people move, dude. It gives them belief in themselves. It gives them confidence. You yep. know what I mean? It, it, yep. it, it helps them stop overthinking everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, we'll get, we will improve this. But who cares right now? You know? And I yep. started teaching a dude within two years, I was out of the field and I was making damn six figures a month in overrides from that one simple concept. That's awesome. You know? So I'm like, why change the way I'm teaching it? It works. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and it was, I'll never forget. It was like, it was March of 2015 when that kind of like light bulb moment for me. I That's was like, so cool, man. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. Appreciate you sharing that. Um, if, dude, if they want to reach, if they want to reach out, you know, keep following, stay in touch. Um, where should we send them? What should they do? Yeah, dude. Well, y'all built my fancy new website, which should definitely be live by the time this goes out. So they can definitely go to johnwetmore.com now because it's no longer a cheesy link tree that I did on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually badass. It is so awesome, dude. It's cool. I appreciate yeah. you and you, the man. team Thank you. putting it together. Y'all awesome. killed it. Appreciate and thankfully, it. we've done enough stuff together that we had some cool, you all had some cool content. So totally. I didn't even have to send much of anything. Totally. Um, but they can yeah, they bro. can go there and it leads to all my socials. I'm on Instagram okay. and Facebook. I don't really mess. I'm on some of the other socials, but it's not me. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? My, my team, yeah. but like Instagram and Facebook, it's actually me. Okay. Um, so you can hit me up, DM me, whatever. Um, cool. but John Wetmore.com will lead to everything. And, I love it. We'll throw the link down yeah. below in description. Uh, dude, I appreciate you being back on and welcome back on the channel, man. I appreciate your time. My dude. I appreciate it, bro. Looking forward Thanks. to it. We'll see you soon for sure. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you guys for hanging out and listening to the John Wetmore. Check him out at johnwetmore.com. Go check out his site, man. And that he mentioned the team builder. That's freaking sick. It's awesome. At least go take a look and yeah. we will see you on the next episode. Adios. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. I'm so excited for today's CA Power Player Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Askins. We got a special guest. He is back on the channel talking about how to sell life insurance from home. Here's what I, well, here's what I love about this person. Okay, I'm telling you, this will be the, one of the best.